is Charlie Craven with Fly Fisherman Magazine, and today we're going to talk about a new fly I've been working on called the Fat Angie. I'm super excited about this one. You can read about it in the August-September issue of the magazine, or stay tuned right now and I'll tie one up for you. All right, we're about to tie a Fat Angie. Um, this is a fly that uh, I get sort, have sort of been working on for the last several years. Um, started off as a uh, small ant in uh, uh, has sort of branched out into uh, you know whole whole other realm. So um, I tie the the mini fat Angie and the big fat Angie, or uh, maybe maybe smaller fat Angie and big fat Angie. But um, at any rate, this uh, this fly was uh, sort of the the idea was to make a, a medium sized. Uh, uh, pattern that would imitate a large ant or just a general terrestrial and uh, this is what I came up with. So what I've got here is a Daiichi 1167. This is a clink hammer hook and you can see it's got a pretty severe bend in it um, and that's on purpose. I want uh, I want the back end of this fly to sit down low in the water. When I was uh, developing this fly I, I uh, looked at pictures of real ants in the water and uh, um, you know if you pay attention to kind of how they sit their butt end is pretty far down in the water so that's why I went with this curved hook and I'm tying a size 14. This would be a, a medium size. Um, I tie these up to size 8s, uh, much bigger, and kind of use them as a dry dropper bug. Um, and then, you know, all the way down to size uh, 16 or 18, typically. Um, but I do fish this size 14 a lot. Um, you know, just kind of a general attractor summertime bug. Um, and I'm going to start off with some 14 knot red vivas. And of course, you could do this in black. I'm making this one a little more attractory colored, but. I'm going to start this thread about in the center of the hook and I'm going to make a thread base well down around the bend and come back up again. Now this is a foam bodied fly and one of the catches on foam bodied flies is as you fish them um, if you don't have them glued to the hook they, they break loose. Um, so before we even tie the foam down I'm going to take and put just a little light coat of Zappa Gap right over the top of that thread base. Now the body on this is 3 millimeter foam and I cut it fairly square, that end's not terribly square, let me get you a little better look, so about 3 by 3 millimeter and if you look closely here you can see I've knocked the top edges off um, that outside curve, I just brought my scissors in there and kind of knock that off um, just to round that up a little bit. But I'm going to take this piece of foam and just about even with the hook point I'm going to catch it here on top of the hook and I'm going to spiral wrap back over it all the way down over that glued thread base and I want to keep it oriented upright on the hook there and then I can anchor that foam down tightly. Now the abdomen is just mahogany brown super fine dubbing. You can use rusty brown also. Um, and it's going to take a little more than you think. I'm going to probably have to do this in two increments because the camera is pretty close to me so I can't make too long a strand of dubbing. But I want this dubbing on fairly tight. And I'll start it back here at the bend. And I want to build a big fat butt end on this fly. So I'm going to work back and forth and fatten up that, that back end, the gaster end of the ant. And you can see I haven't come off the end of the foam. It's still showing up here. And then as I run out of dubbing, I'll jump up onto, onto bare hook. And I'll run that thread all the way forward and back again to that front edge. Once I get there, I usually reposition the hook a bit. It um, just makes gravity work a little more for me rather than against me. So again, before I tie this foam down, just in the interest of durability, I'm going to put just a touch of zap right there on the top of that, that thread base. And I'm going to pull this piece of foam over. I don't really stretch it very tightly. I'll bring my thread straight up over the top and then pull straight down. Get a couple turns on there, like so. So we've got that fat back end. Then I'm going to bump my thread forward just a little bit, just a you know, an eye length or two, and I'll catch that foam again. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cover that little section with a band of thread. So that's going to make our waist there in the center. So now for the legs, this is just black super floss, and I'm going to take two strands, and I'm just going to put one on each side, 
I'll take the first one here on my near side and catch it um, right in the middle of that thread band. Get a few turns on it and you can, can sort of position it right in place. I'll just cut the other end of that off and use it on the other side. Catch this right in place on the far side with a few turns. And again, if you catch those in the center of that, that band, you can kind of get them to spread out nice and even like that. And don't feel bad about you know, manually adjusting them to get them to sit where you want. Um, so now what I'll do is I'm going to lift this foam up again and I'm going to bring it forward another third and with this real curved hook you can see I just keep repositioning it to kind of keep everything lined up and I'll bring my thread up and down again and make one more segment here and bind that down in place, lift it up again and come all the way up to the hook eye and bind it down once more now once I'm there, you can see the advantage of having these legs short, I keep moving them out of the way um, just so that you can see what I'm doing, um, but the advantage of having those legs short is see how the thread will just push them out of the way. Um, if you leave them real long, they're gonna be they're gonna be in your way more. I'm gonna trim that front end of the foam down just a bit, and then again I'm gonna create another band of thread here in between those last two segments. So you can kind of see what we've got going on there now. Now for the wing on this fly, what I've been using is uh, that same polypropylene macrame yarn uh, that I used on the, uh, uh, the stubby chubby and the, uh, the elevated chubby that uh, we talked about a, a few issues back. Um, in this case I've got rust and tan and gray and black sort of all mixed together. I've brushed them together. and I'm going to take a little clump of this. Um, and the size of the wing, the density of the wing is sort of up to you. Um, you know, if you're if you're using it as a dry dropper fly, hanging a bead head or something underneath it, maybe make the wing a little bit heavier. Um, if you're fishing it as a true ant, um, which is something that is not done enough, um, but if you're fishing it as a true ant, go a little bit heavier. So I I'd call that a little on the heavy side. So I take a little clump of that, and then I'm going to take some blue UV ice fiber, and I'm just going to take a few strands. And I'm going to set that in with the wing material. And I don't really necessarily put it on top, I just put it with it. You know, it always ends up on top somewhere. And I'll just cut it to the same length as the, as the material clump. So now I've got that flash mixed in with the wing material. And I'll lay this in right at the front edge of the body. And I'm going to catch it with a couple turns at the center of its length. And then I'll come around and X this in sort of like bad spinner wings so that they're kind of swept back. And you can see how how bright that flash appears under this bright light. Um, as silly as it seems, those few little strands of flash stuck stuck in there uh, make this fly so much more visible on the water. I've been doing this on a lot of my uh, attractor dries, just putting a little bit of that blue UV in there and uh, it really makes the fly a lot more, a lot easier to see. Now before I get too far along, I'm going to tie in a a brown hackle, and this one is one that I dyed. Um, this is a badger dyed fiery brown, um, but a regular regular brown hackle will work fine here. I'm going to tie this in right here at this front edge, right up to the base of the wing. And then I'll take another pinch of that mahogany dubbing. And it's not going to take much here. And we're going to dub our thorax, and we're just really kind of making a base for the hackle with this dubbing. Um, not necessarily trying to build up a a whole lot of volume here. So I'll get that dubbing on there. I'll sweep those legs back. And I'm going to dub from the front right up to, again, right up to the base of the wing. And come forward and end with bare thread just behind the, the hook eye there. So now I'll take my hackle feather and I'm going to start palmering him just evenly spaced turns. Right up to the eye. Time off with a couple good tight turns. And then I can come in and trim that feather out. I'll lift the front end of that foam up and I'm just going to tuck 
enough turns of thread between the hook eye and that piece of foam to elevate it slightly. And that's purely selfishly for me to keep that hook eye a little exposed so that when I go to tie this fly in, um, tie this fly on, it goes a little bit easier. So then I'll take my whip finisher and I'll tuck that whip finish in underneath there as well. Cinch my knot down tight, trim my thread out. And then we'll commence to trim the other pieces. Um, I always like to kind of straighten the legs out, get them right where I want them. About like so. And these back legs will be about half again the length of the body, the front legs, legs just about up to the hook eye. This front end I'm just going to trim off square straight across just beyond the hook eye. And these wings are going to be just a little longer than the body. So I'm going to bring these up just past the end of the body and I'll just trim those straight across. Kind of fluff them out a little bit. Now I typically come in and trim this hackle off the bottom. Um, and the way I do that is I'll just pinch everything from the bottom and bring my scissors up and trim that off flush. Um, and you can always kind of go in and clean that up so it sits just a little bit lower. <laughs> just makes the fly sit low on the water. Uh, but still gives us that surface area that helps to float it. Um, being a foam fly, it doesn't need a whole lot of help, but um, that little bit of surface area certainly doesn't hurt. I'm going to knock the edges off that front cut just to round things up a bit. Um, and if you really want to get picky, you could knock that edge off it as well, and you've got a pretty ant-shaped little head. And then I'll usually turn this fly over, and put just a little drop of zappa gap right on that trimmed hackle and on the thread waist between the the abdomen and the uh, second section just to toughen that up a little bit and that is that's our fat angie um, like I say just general attractor kinda could be a wasp, could be an ant, could be a flying ant obviously is with those wings um, just general critter, could be a beetle um, you know there's all sorts of different sizes and shapes of beetles out there in the world but um, this is the little version um, I tie them in all sorts of sizes uh, you know up, up to real big you know with a double wing and that is our our finished Fat Angie. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I should probably mention you can certainly put the little pink indicator in on top. Um, that's a, an optional step and I usually do that on the bigger ones. Um, you know, very easy to do on the small ones as well. There you go. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Um, uh, before I let you go, I should probably tell you where Fat Angie came from. This is, uh, this fly is actually named after my little sister and her name is not Angie and she's not fat. So you'll have to read the article to hear the story about that, but uh, that's where it came from. Anyway, there. Thanks for watching. Take care.